guys, welcome back. So today I want to talk about a classic firearm. I talk about new guns or new firearms quite a bit here on the channel. I don't always get a chance to go back through my collection of older guns and talk about them. And hopefully this year in 2016, I'm going to make a resolution to occasionally bring out some of the classic firearms I do have in my, my collection. One of the guns that I want to talk about is this one. This is the Calico M900. This is a gun from the past, although it's still currently being produced, or I should say it's been resurrected like the Phoenix from Ashes. This gun was originally brought to market around 1985. It was designed to be a submachine gun in 9mm, and it was meant to try to win over some military contracts. Well, it wasn't very successful. It wasn't very successful at winning over military contracts, nor was it very successful on the civilian market. You may also know that it was produced as a 22 long rifle firearm as well. The M900 was unique in one regard, and that was the use of these cylindrical magazines. Now this is the 50 round version. They also had one that was roughly twice as long that was a 100 round version. This is the carbine. They also made a pistol. The carbine that I have has the collapsible stock. They also offered it with a fixed length stock. And these guns were on the market until around 1994. And if you know your firearms history, you'll know what happened in 1994. President Clinton passed what was then called the assault weapons ban, and it banned a number of firearms, and it also banned any magazine over 10 rounds. Well, that wasn't going to work for Calico, because one of their primary selling points was a cylindrical 50 and 100 round magazine. So the company went out of business. They really didn't have a market anymore. After the bill sunset in 2004, the company was resurrected. They once again started making the guns. Uh, spare parts are available. Again, this is a pre band classic. This isn't one of the newly manufactured guns. They started making them again, and they're, they're selling now for 800 some bucks. Uh, they're probably a little bit overpriced for what they were or are. So let's talk a little bit about what this gun is, how it came about, some of its unique features, and just do some shooting with this cool gun from the past. If you guys have followed the channel for a while, you'll know that I've worn these ears pretty much since the beginning of the channel. I've had these for many, many years. They're TAC Sports, they're 3M Peltors. I get asked all the time what the ears are that you see in the video. So this is what I've had historically. They've been very good ears. I've had these all over the world. They're starting to fray. I understand from talking to 3M at SHOT Show this year that uh, they've, they've corrected this issue where over time this material will break down and expose the wires. But even then, I've had these out in the rain. I was just recently in Turkey with these in the snow and the cold, and despite the fact that they were opened, I still didn't have any shorts or anything like that. These things continue to work. The only upgrade I've really done to them are the, um, these cup inserts. These are very, very soft foam ear cup inserts that uh, really were an upgrade. Well, I'm trying to retire these because they are getting old, and I was looking at a new set, and somebody told me about a new product from 3M, and it's their little earbuds. Now, these have improved electronics over them. One of the things I really liked about the, ta the Tactical Sports was that they gave very good uh, audio improvements. So my hearing was actually enhanced when it wasn't cutting off gunfire. Supposedly, this these little guys have the same electronics, actually improved electronics, and they fit inside of your ear. Over here, you have a battery compartment. So when they're in the case, they're charging. You put three. Uh, AA batteries in there and they keep your earbuds ready. They, they plug in here and are charging when they're not in use. You push this little button and you see the little green light. If it, the sunlight's not too much, you can see the little green light saying that they're charged and ready to go. You take them out and you put them in your ears. They're very small and easy to lose, which is what I'm worried about, but they have a little power button here and they have several different modes. You just put them in your ear and rotate them back like that, and I'll put the other one in, same thing, you just put it in your ear and rotate it back into the recess of your ear there, and just push the buttons, and I run it in mode 2, I'm going to push the button over here, and now I have enhanced hearing. The only thing that's a little bit different is with these, 
I don't hear my own voice as much. If you stick your fingers in your ear and talk, you'll know what I'm, I'm talking about. So with these earbuds plugged in, I'm getting a little bit of my own voice echoing around in my head, and I can hear that, which makes a little bit different. But in terms of audio, I still have my directional hearing, and it improves my ability to hear my surroundings, again, in stereo, over not having them on. So I'm testing them out. I'll let you guys know how they go. If you see me continuing to use them, you'll know that I like them. Let's go ahead and load 50 rounds of ammunition. This is EQI. I'm going to go ahead and dump it out. It makes it a little bit easier, especially in the cold. This is that 123 grain stuff that I'm always using. All right, so I'm going to release the spring tension on the magazine by pushing the button on the rear. And then I found that given it one or two cranks, you'll see the follower come up here until the follower appears, and I stop. It keeps the rounds from falling around in the magazine and getting in the magazine backwards, that little bit of spring pressure. Then you just load it like you would any other magazine. Just push it in and back. And you gotta do this 50 times. Now, unlike a lot of drum magazines, this is more like loading a regular magazine. Um, it will slice your fingers up. This, this is a metal ledge here. The harder you push, the more likely it is you are to mangle your thumb get a slice in it, but uh, and you can see that the rounds are kind of flopping around a little bit loose. I'm going to go ahead and wind that spring up just a little bit more. That tension helps me keep the, the bullets oriented and keeps them from falling out. And we'll do this until we get a full box of 50 into the gun. Now that I have all 50 rounds loaded into the magazine, I'm going to take out the little crank and I'm going to make 10 full revolutions. Actually, I just did 11. All right, that should do it. Get one more for good measure. You don't want to overwind it, but if you don't wind it enough, it won't be reliable. All right, now let's go shoot this little guy and see what she's all about. To fire this bad boy, you just take the magazine, bullets facing forward, set it in there, and It'll lock into place. Ugh, it's kind of hard to, uh, actually, it's a little bit easier if you lock the bolt open. So I'm going to go ahead, I forget, on a full magazine. I'm going to lock the bolt open. You can see the bolt's locked open. And now it's going to be a little easier because you're fighting against this round right here. Set that in there, and it just locks right in. Now the bolt hold is right there. I'm going to hit that with my finger. It just chambered the first round. On top, you have these little windows that show you round count. So here's 50. Uh, 37, 23, and 9, okay, kind of arbitrary numbers. Another thing that's cool to point out is that the front sight is adjustable. This left knob adjusts windage, and the right knob adjusts elevation, so it'll move the sight up and down. The clicks are rather positive, and it, it actually works pretty well in terms of just functionality. But every time you change magazines, you're changing that rear sight out. The gun does eject out the bottom. I currently have it on fire. There's only one position in the extended position for the stock, but you could cut other grooves in here if you really wanted to, but I wouldn't mangle a, a pre-band gun. It's on fire, and let's hit that man-sized target at 100 yards. It's kind of weird, because the rear sight is like a pistol you're holding too close to your face. It's pistol sights, and with my bad aging eyes, it's kind of hard to make out that rear sight. So this isn't the best sighting arrangement, and of course there's nowhere to put a pick rail unless you put it on the top of the magazine. All right, that's it. Now it does not lock open when the last shot fired. If you want to lock it open, you have to do that manually. Push there, charge, and there we go. Now you can tell this thing was hitting a little bit high and right. First shot went over his right shoulder. I had to aim towards the lower left-hand side of the man-sized target. So I can actually adjust for that. Move that front sight just a little bit to the right and move it down. And that will probably get me a little closer to center. All right, let's load up another magazine. Some of the features of the M900 are, first of all, 
the collapsible stock. There's a lever here, a very simple, rather crude mechanism. You pinch and pull and it locks in the fully extended position. To collapse it, you press it in again, push, and collapse it. You'll see how the bar slides into these little recesses here on the side of the receiver. The forward part of the gun and the lower housing are, are polymer. The receiver itself is a cast aluminum. The front sight, which is right here, has a drum that you can adjust for windage. So you can turn the knob and move it left and right. What's odd is that the rear sight is actually on the rear of the magazine is non-adjustable. It does have a three dot sight arrangement. So when you change magazines, you're also changing rear sights. So I only have the one magazine, the 50 rounder. I don't have a 100 rounder because well, the gun that I bought didn't have one, and secondly, they weren't very reliable. These things are kind of known for being spotty in the reliability department, so you'll find that the 50-round magazines typically perform better than the 100-round magazines. While we're talking about the magazine to release it, there's two little pinch points, and you can see the one here on this side. It's identical on the other side. You simply pinch in the front, it releases the magazine, and it pops off rather easily. You load the magazine, bullets facing this way, by placing them in here, and it behaves a lot like a 75 round drum for an AK. So once you get the rounds loaded into the magazine, there's this little self-contained crank that pops out, and you'll give it 10 cranks, 10 full revolutions once it's loaded. Okay, tuck the, the little crank away, and now your magazine's ready to be inserted to the gun to be fired. To release the spring tension, just like an AK drum, there's this little button right here on the rear end. You just push that, and it releases that spring tension. So every time you load the magazine, you'll probably want to release that spring tension so you know how many winds you're putting into it. I've never broken one, but the assumption is if you wind it too many times, you'll break the magazine. So the charging handle is right here. Very simple mechanism. So you charge the weapon that way. The safety lever is right here, so that would be safe with the white S showing, and that would be fire. You'll notice it's present on both sides of the receiver, so it has an ambi safety lever. Just put your finger right there until you're ready to fire, push, and then fire. The trigger on it's rather unique. It's a short trigger. It almost feels like the gun malfunctions every time. The reset's non-existent. It's just a really goofy feeling trigger. Now to field strip the gun, it's really simple. First, you'll want to put it on fire, make sure that the weapon's clear. You can see right into the chamber area by pulling the, the charging handle to the rear. I also should point out that right here, even though it doesn't lock open on the last round fired, you can push on the back part of this tab, pull the charging handle to the rear, and lock the bolt open. You can see that the bolt's locked open. So it's feeding from the top down in, then it's going to eject straight out the bottom. So you can lock the bolt open manually when you insert a full magazine. You can just reach up here with your finger push the forward part of the lever, and the bolt snaps home and chambers around. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure the weapon's clear, and then I'm going to go ahead and put it on fire, release the hammer, okay? Then there's a little pin that's tucked away behind the charging handle. It's a standard push pin that you'll find like on an HK style firearm. Pull the pin out, and now this pistol grip assembly will simply slide off to the rear. There's your trigger inside there, and then your bolt is right here, and it has its little striker assembly. So the striker assembly is right here. You can see me drawing it back, and then the sear is in the pistol grip, so it's a striker-fired gun. There's no hammer. To take the bolt out, it's a little bit cold. My fingers are numb. <laughs> I popped it right out. Take the bolt out. You just simply pull back on it and pull up, and the bolt will pop out. Now, here's what you're going to find interesting, or what I find interesting is you see those little rollers? What does that remind you of? Perhaps it reminds you of something like this. Well, that's exactly where it bo borrows its locking mechanism is from the H and K roller locking system used on the MP5 and other rifles. So that's really kind of unique. You'll notice the, st the spring arrangement here. It's a relatively simple system. You can see the striker as I pull it to the rear. That's the striker in the rear. All right. 
And then you can see inside the receiver. It's very simple. You can see the recesses where it's cut out for the rollers to lock. So it's just a straight roller locked blowback system. Putting it back together, just put the bolt in, set it down, everything fits in there nicely. Slide the pistol grip forward, replace your pin, and quick function check, and everything seems to be working okay. All right, another magazine. I've made some adjustments to that front sight. Let's see how close I, uh, I get here. I've got to find my little bolt release to being centered now. Like I said, the sighting arrangement is less than ideal. Still hit him in the shoulder over there. Let's come back. I should go right. I think my sight might be maxed out there. Oh, there we went a little too far. Do the elevation adjustment there. There we go. What do you know? I've zeroed my calico. Hmm. How many rounds I got left? About 23 according to the window. Let's go back to 50 yards and see what it can do. I should think a hit. Yep. Well, I'm hitting every time. That's encouraging. Huh, what do you know? Yeah, what the heck, mag dump. <laughs> I don't want to hear about how unsafe that was. I do it all the time. Haven't been hit yet. That sucker's frozen. That's why we're not doing mud tests right now. <laughs> we should be setting up hockey matches out here. Huh, well anyway, this thing performed much better at 50 yards than I thought it would. That's a lot of fun. Let's let Jason shoot it for a little bit. A cool gun. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed coming out to the range to play with the Calico M900, the pre-band 9mm carbine. These were also available as pistols, as 9mm, and again as 22s. It's a classic rifle, uh, 
not known for its robust nature. As a matter of fact, we had to patch up the magazine here a few minutes ago. It kind of disassembled itself. Um, but they're really fun guns to shoot and certainly something that I enjoy having in my collection. Again, they are still making these guns. If you get the urge to buy something odd and unique, they're out there. If you want to spend almost $1,000 on them, I don't know that I'd recommend it. But again, worth is one of those things. I like this one because it's a pre-ban and reminds me of my youth. If you guys would like to uh, support the Military Arms channel, you can do so by shopping at Copper Custom, which is our online store. You can swing by and do something like pick up a Mac patch for $3.99. It really does help us out. Also, if you haven't already, please check out Full30.com. That's Full30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearms content creators and brought them under one roof, which is Full30.com. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Stick around for a comparison video between the CMMG Mutant and the LAR-47.